Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Uh, good morning, New Life. Um, it's an honor to be sharing my testimony with you all today. My name is Lily Morris, and I'm a member of Tokyo House Church, shepherded by Danny and Joyce Lee. Um, I'm so grateful for their patience with me and unfaltering concern for my spiritual and emotional well-being. Um, I've never met two people so willing to sacrifice the amount of time and energy that they do to support me and the other members in our house church. So thank you both so much for everything. Um, although I can speak comfortably about my testimony in this church now, um, parsing through my religious beliefs and accepting Jesus were very uncomfortable for me. For many years, I lived in denial of the fact that God was trying to reconnect with me. Um, I grew up in a fairly stable household as an only child, knowing and feeling confident in Jesus' love for me. My parents took me to Sunday school every week, and for the first five to seven years of my life, I never questioned God's existence or the importance of Christianity in my life. It wasn't until my dad lost his job when I was about nine years old that my life changed dramatically. After a few months of interviews, my dad reluctantly accepted a new position that would require him to deploy to Afghanistan and Iraq for six to 12 months at a time. Even though I admired my father's courage and sacrifice to provide for our family, his absence was devastating for me at the time. My mother and I didn't get along and she often didn't have the emotional capacity to spend as much time with me as my dad did when he was present. As an only child without much parental attention, I immediately turned to my peers and friends for validation around the time I was entering middle school. As I'm sure you can imagine, seeking acceptance from your peers in middle school is a rather ambitious task and one that I believe drove me far away from God. It felt like at every institution I attended, whether it be my church's Sunday school, my Christian summer camp, or my Christian middle school, I was being ignored, excluded, called weird, quiet, awkward, annoying, and clingy. I never fit in and I ultimately felt betrayed by a group of people who I believed were not acting in accordance with what, meant, what it meant to be a Christian. So around the age of 12, I decided I didn't want to have anything to do with Christianity. Frankly, I didn't want to be associated with a hypocritical group of people whose actions made me feel so alone and so unloved. So I did what any rebellious middle schooler would do. I started listening to really explicit rap music. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds silly, but it was almost empowering to be like, yes, Lil Wayne is my favorite music, music artist, and yes, I do know all the words to this song, and yes, I will be singing all of the bad words too. To be clear, I'm not trying to say that rap music was the avenue by which I distanced myself from God, but it certainly helped me feel empowered to go against the grain of what people, particularly Christians my age, were doing. I could spend a lot of time describing the ways in which I worked hard to distinguish myself from those um, I felt were dismissing me, but I will just say that my rebellious actions and denial of God's presence continued through college. I made it a point to attend a university with zero religious affiliation and essentially live by my own rules, drinking, partying, staying out as late as I wanted, eating whatever I wanted, etc., I sincerely thought I was free and living life to the fullest, but I was just masking and refusing to address the social and career-related anxieties that were intensifying in the background. Fast forward about two years after I graduated from college in 2019, I was still living for myself and by my own rules. My anxiety peaked in November of 2021 at the end of my first semester of medical school here in Houston. I was experiencing a lot of irrational fears about contracting the diseases I was learning about in school, and I was spending the majority of my time studying alone, which further exacerbated my anxiety. I ended up reaching out to Bohan Kim, who had essentially become my best friend um, around that time. Of course, at first, he was really considerate and talked me through a lot of my irrational thoughts, but I remember one time he suddenly asked me, well, how's your relationship with God? I didn't know what to say, but for whatever reason, the word non-existent didn't feel right. It was the first time I considered the possibility that I wasn't even mad at God or Jesus in the first place. I had denied, ignored, and run away from God because I was rejected by people who claimed to love and follow him. I was embarrassed to admit it, but I think that was the first time I felt my heart soften to the idea of accepting Jesus. 
With Bohan, I was able to express my anger and frustration with Christianity, its rules, its followers, and how I felt rejected. The next thing I knew, I was attending house church and sharing these sentiments with a larger group. I honestly cannot say that there was one reason, one reason in particular that I kept going back somewhat consistently, but in hindsight, I think God was actively working on my attitude by showing me that there are Christians in this world who strive to be like Jesus. I began to feel less anger, resentment, and hurt. God was showing me that it was time to let go of these feelings. In December of 2022, I attended RJM on a day when I was feeling a lot of frustration and resentment towards Bohan because he begged me for several days to go and see what it was like. I remember Pastor Eric asking everyone in the room, if you were to die today, do you think you would go to heaven or hell? I'm going to be honest, I have joked before saying like, oh yeah, I'm going to hell, but this question really impacted me and I actually believed, truly believed that in that moment, if I were to die, I would go to hell. It took significant effort for me to hide my tears and not cry during that meeting. Um, towards the end, when we closed our eyes and we were asked to raise our hands if we wanted to accept Jesus, I hesitated. <laughs> I didn't raise my hand the first time and I thought I had missed my opportunity. But then Pastor Eric asked, anyone else? And as, <laughs> and as soon as I raised my hand, I heard, good. <laughs> Um, the moment I put my faith in Jesus, he delivered the love and acceptance that I always wanted from a Christian community. I've never felt so celebrated and supported by a group of people as I have by my shepherds and by my house church. Even though it has not been perfect, I have worked hard to give up my anxieties about medical school, my future, and my social relationships to God. I have felt a lot of comfort, peace, and reassurance through prayer, which is something I've never experienced before. Since becoming a Christian, I have repaired damaged friendships with people I wrote off in the past, become spiritually close with one of my best friends in medical school, fostered close, genuine relationships with a number of my house church members, and finally, I opened up to the idea of baptism after pushing it off for almost six months. All I can say is that I'm a work in progress. I have so much to learn, and I still have a lot of spiritual growing up to do. Thank you to everyone in my house church who has loved me despite my bad attitude and occasional rough exterior. You all have blessed my journey and I wish we didn't have to multiply because I cannot imagine not sharing my life with you all every Friday. And to address God directly, thank you for putting your hand on me and protecting me even when I rejected you. I love you and I'm sorry it took me so long to realize how much you care for me. Thank you.